Guys, we have a, a situation we need to deal with here today, and that's why I'm wearing the mask, because this is Joe's computer that we built uh, only about eight months ago. It is not working properly, and he brought it over so we could fix it. To be safe, we're both wearing masks so we can uh, continue to hopefully not spread disease betwixt each other. Yeah, I said betwixt, that's fine. <laughs> I like betwixt. But if there is like a headline for this video, it's probably that you guys were right. We were warned about the liquid cooler that we put in this system. We ignored those warnings. And now we're paying the price. Excellent. The XPG Xenia gaming laptop from Adata is built for gaming with an Intel Core i7 9750H processor, 32 gigabytes of XPG DDR4 memory, an ultra fast XPG SX8200 Pro NVMe SSD, and either an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2070 Max-Q or a GTX 1660 Ti GPU. Additional features include a mechanical keyboard with optical actuation and per-key RGB illumination, a lightweight magnesium alloy body, a 15.6 inch IPS display with a 144Hz refresh rate, Thunderbolt 3, Wi-Fi 6, and up to 10 hours of battery life. Click the sponsor link in the description for more. So this computer Joe lovingly calls Party Monster. It's sort of the name he's carried on from his previous build and it's it's really nice. It's got a 2920X in there, an AMD Threadripper 12 core 24 thread processor, as well as a very difficult to find MSI RTX 2080 Ti Lightning. So Joe uses this for both video editing as well as gaming. He's, he's really good at Apex Legends. You should totally check out his YouTube channel. Uh, <laughs> but it's pretty packed with stuff, not just all of the hardware that we installed when we actually built the thing. We were asking Twitter about what parts to use, so that's how we made some of the decisions about what went in here, but he's also added more storage. He's got his full memory kit here, which is what, 128 gigs yes. of, of memory across eight DIMMs. However, yesterday, when Joe went to fire up his computer to render out some proxies to do an edit for me, he found that it was not functioning the way he would have liked it to. In fact, it was running at like, 0.53 gigahertz, which is about like 530 megahertz, which isn't necessarily the speed the Threadripper 2920X is supposed to run at. Joe ran Hardware Info 64 to double check the temperatures and found that the control temperature, which is sort of the faux temperature that Threadripper runs, it's a higher than the actual temperature, so that the fan speed will run higher, is getting well above 90C. Actual temps on the die are getting above 70C, which isn't the end of the world, but is enough for this CPU to throttle. And it's definitely a lot hotter than it should be running with a nice AIO like the AIO that's in here, which is the Enermax Liquitec 2 TR4, or Liquitec TR4 2. I'm gonna link the Gamers Nexus analysis of the TR4 uh, liquid coolers from Enermax in the description. If you're not familiar with it, they've done a bunch of testing. The first generation of those AIOs were very prone to gunking up inside and basically stopping to function after something like three to six months, depending on the user and the use case. The version two of those coolers was supposed to address that problem, but as Gamers Nexus found out and as quite a few end users found out, that wasn't universally the case. So we're pretty confident that that is what's causing the overheating here. It's been building up over time and it would probably just get worse. So fortunately, I actually have quite a few coolers here on hand. And as many people have done in the past when they get burned or m wetted by an all-in-one that's not working properly. So we're switching back to air cooling because this is a production machine. You, Joe uses it for work as well as for gaming. And just having fewer points of failure in something that you're using for work is a good idea. And when you go with liquid cooling, you're adding more points of failure because the pump could break, the liquid could gunk up like this. And Joe's also had issues with the fans starting to rattle too. So we're just gonna clear that out of there and we are going to be upgrading to the Cooler Master produced Wraith Ripper air cooler, which is actually pretty cool. It even has RGB. So this case is the Fantex Eclipse P600S, uh, which is which is a very nice looking case. Has a few quirks here and there. I would say it would be a more popular case if it wasn't a little bit on the expensive side. And ours in particular has this fun thing where the side panel isn't quite aligned. So you have to kind of wrangle it off here. There we go. So inside we have a system that has uh, been in use pretty regularly for about eight months. And you can see we got the uh, Lightning RTX 2080 Ti graphics card right there. Joe didn't do any cleaning or anything like that. So we're seeing the, the real raw dustiness and everything like that. Honestly, it's not too bad, all things considered. We do have a good amount of dust on the dust filters. I guess that is uh, going to show the dust filters actually do a good job of filtering dust. Although this probably could be cleaned and vacuumed off a little bit. We'll get to that in just a moment. As you can see, Joe takes utmost pride in 
to storage, <laughs> mounting them all in here. Yeah. Well, have you considered this one? Because Joe also has a storage drive that just stopped appearing. Have you considered that this one has the word bad written on the back of it? That one started working out of nowhere. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. You just had to chastise it for a minute. I should use it as a coaster for a while. <laughs> okay. We'll just, just pop those back in there. We're doing a little bit of deduction here because Joe had another mystery that we were trying to solve, which is all of his drives he has connected, which is a total of seven. You might have seen there's three mounted behind the motherboard here, two hanging out down here in the power supply area down at the bottom. There's a single mechanical two terabyte drive right there, and then M.2 drives. It turns out it seems like all the drives that are plugged in are being recognized, and there's actually no issue there, but Joe was just reality checking. He's running everything off the 960 Evo 500 gig version here, and then he added another one, which I believe is being used as a cache drive, uh, or for proxies, or yeah. it's, it's another fast storage drive. And there is still an open M.2 drive down here, and we left that one open intentionally because it's accessible. So if Joe wanted to pop in another M.2 NVMe SSD, he totally could. Now he's gonna have to, because we've mentioned it. It will eat away at his brain until he, until he makes a change. Hey, Joe? Right. I don't think we had a shot of you with your mask yet, either. You like my mask? It's very nice. So there it is. The Liquitec TR2 has been removed. And I guess uh, I should send this to, to Steve now so he can take it apart and look at the gunk inside there. We do not have time to do that today, unfortunately. We're just going to move on with the installation of the air cooler. So we have uh, removed, well, we removed the uh, GPU because it's, it's huge and getting it out of the way was helpful there. And then we have removed the cooler and the paste. There was a lot of paste on there. Uh, we cleaned it up pretty well. There's still some in there in the corners around the edges. We're just gonna leave that be to prevent us from having to remove the CPU and re-socket it. But hey, check out that 128 gig Crucial Ballistics memory kit right there. Looking super sweet and uh, very, very all business, I would say. <laughs> Who needs RGB on top of your super sweet memory kit? All you really need is lots and lots of memory. Also, you should make sure it's all slotted in all the way. There we go. So this CPU cooler is a big beefy air cooler. It's manufactured by Cooler Master. It is known as the Wraith Ripper. Uh, there isn't really like a stock heat sink fan for, for Threadripper CPUs, but this is probably the closest that you would come simply because AMD worked directly with Cooler Master to have this CPU cooler produced and made available along with the launch of, uh, I forget whether it was first or second gen. I have not used this one. It's been sitting in the corner of my garage getting dusty and that's why when Joe said, hey, I'm having issues with CPU temperatures, I was like, hey, don't go to Micro Center and buy something and fix it yourself. You should come over here because I have the stuff that you need. Uh, this one actually looks pretty nice and it does have RGB accents along the front here, which we might get plugged in and working. And it even comes with thermal paste pre-applied, although apparently I have managed to smudge it with my finger at some point. This cooler has a single 140 millimeter fan at the center and I was just double checking some reviews on it and everything just to sort of reality check and there are some negative reviews on this. One is that some of these shipped apparently with the fan uh, pointed the wrong direction so we'll need to double check that. Second is there are some X399 motherboards that it is not compatible with including the Oris Extreme apparently according to the Newegg reviews and I hope that doesn't apply to Joe's motherboard which is the Oris Gaming 7. And I think this is actually not too terribly difficult to install because the, the screw holes just go straight through the whole thing. Mm -hmm. All right, that's the back of the fan, so the fan will be pointing that way. 
So just checking the fan orientation, I can look and I can see the sticker on the fan there, and that usually means that's the exhaust direction, so the air should be blowing out that way. So if you have it positioned that way, the air should go that way. So it looks like our fan is oriented properly. This is also not a terribly difficult cooler to install because you've got the back plate already pre-installed for X399 motherboards, and then uh, you have screws on the top here. So all you're gonna do is position it over the top and then screw down these four screws, and as long as you have it aligned properly, it should install properly. So it seems like we're all right. I thought for a second there was a conflict here with the two mounting points for the top side of the, of the bracket and this heat sink, but it does seem like there's clearance there and it does seem like there's enough vertical clearance to actually mount this and secure it down. We'll, we'll find out in just a moment. All right, so I've secured all four of these screws down and again, just very, Convenience the mounting method for this actually fairly simple as long as you have clearance final question when it comes to compatibility is we're pretty close to the top slot here so we're, we're really crossing our fingers that the uh, 2080 Ti lightning still fits in there if not Joe we can down downgrade you to what, what, what was the other option in the video I think a 1650 GTX uh, yeah, that, sure. that would probably fit oh, yeah, okay. crossing fingers and a prayer beautiful <laughs> it's right up against it but that's fine that's what the back plate's there for, is to provide protection between the, the air cooler that you're using and your GPU. So I'm happy that those potential conflicts did not materialize and uh, we seem to have the air cooler installed. Still a little bit more to be done with the system, but uh, we're gonna power it on right now, make sure it's functional before we go to all that trouble. Oh, look, it lights up. I will say, just because it's big and I don't know, the, the RGB accents on it actually do look pretty good. That's a pretty impressive looking cooler there overall. I'm glad we were able to make some use out of it. Speaking of making use out of it, oh my gosh, look over here. Look at that CPU speed. It's actually hitting 3.5 to 4 gigahertz. It depends what it's doing, of course, but um, we're not capping at like about 15% usage like Joe was seeing before. And here's the story with the, the those T die numbers that you can see right there. We're now in the 30 to 40 C range. Uh, max was 44.1 C, which is a good 30 degrees cooler than we were getting with that all-in-one liquid cooler. And again, those, those temperatures that Joe was seeing, that was at idle. That wasn't actually doing anything. So it appears that the cooler was the issue. Swapping it has solved the problem of the overheating and the throttling, and we can now reassemble the rest of the system. Hooray. What I did? That is what I did, isn't it? What? Yeah, I totally did that. <laughs> What's up, Oops. That works. Ah, I appear to have mounted the fans in the wrong location. It's a very, very common mistake that anyone can make. It's been let a me, while. Let me go ahead and redo that. <laughs> All right, so we're not paying a huge amount of attention to aesthetics with this uh, build. We have added a couple more exhaust fans at the top because uh, that's, that's good for airflow. We've got two intakes at the front. Three fans at the back here is, is a good balance of airflow because these top two are 120s, uh, the back one and the two front ones are 140s. We've also left the system running as we've done this just to sort of keep an eye on things and make sure everything is working as intended. Happy to say we're still getting CPU usage that's uh, in the normal range. Our actual frequencies are getting up to the 4.2 to 4.3 gigahertz range, which is what the C CPU should be operating at. And then when idling or just running on a single core or two, we're hitting anywhere from two to four gigahertz, just depending on what the system's actually doing. And of course we are doing all of this while maintaining a die temperature in the 30 to 40 degrees Celsius range. Minimum temp got all the way down to 28.5 and it's only spiked up to 50.5 max. That's if you're looking at node one down here. Uh, node zero up here is actually running even a little bit cooler. So all we have left to do is uh, get our system reassembled, case reassembled, and then uh, we can call it a day, I think. Let's 
That's just your dried blood. Dried blood right there. Editing hard. Oh gosh. Crack the knuckle. Now if you don't bleed, <laughs> if you don't bleed while you're editing a video, then the render won't work. Exactly. I've heard. Do you want me to wipe that off? No, it's, it gives a character. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, we have fixed Joe's computer, swapping out the uh, clearly defective all-in-one liquid cooler that we put in there. I, I said from the very beginning that was a bad idea, bad choice of components, obviously, due to the track record for that particular series of products. But uh, we are now going to be giving this a thorough wipe down, at least externally make sure that we don't transmit the Rona anywhere. And I would just like to end this video by saying thank you all for watching. I hope you're all doing well. I hope you're all taking time for yourself, for mental health. Play some video games. Take your mind off of what's going on in the world for just a few minutes to sort of re recuperate, get yourself back up to 100%, and then go at it once again, because I've been very impressed, uh, I will even say hopeful recently, with the amount of public activism going on, uh, and people stepping out and speaking their minds and speaking truth to power. That's all for this video though, you guys. I don't wanna to get too distracted. Uh, we're gonna send Joe home with this footage and he's gonna edit it. In fact, you're watching the video that he just edited on this system that we just fixed, kinda of like when we first built it eight months ago. If you enjoyed this video though, hit the thumbs up button, and we'll see you guys in the next one.